um, thank you for so much for coming to uh, have a localize Kubernetes documentation. Uh, we call this a guide for everyone because this is really uh, a, a really 101 session on uh, a what localization is, but also how you can get started in helping uh, participate in localization of the Kubernetes docs. And uh, to get started, I'd like to introduce ourselves. Um, actually, Divya, please take it away. Okay, we are only some of SIG docs because uh, we couldn't obviously get the entire SIG here. So um, I'm Divya and I work as a senior technical evangelist at SUSA. And uh, most of the time I'm pretty much on the SIG docs channel as well. So I'm one of the co-chair of SIG docs. Um, and Natalie, do you want to go ahead? Yes, I am also one of the co-chairs of SIG docs. Um, currently just hanging out in my home, uh, not working on anything else right now, uh, but that might change in the future. Um, but yeah, as a co-chair of SIG docs, uh, Divya and myself and our one missing co-chair who has a talk at exactly the same time in a different SIG, <laughs> uh, which is Ray Lahano, uh, the three of us help to organize a lot of the process and admin and a lot of the you know technical approvals required um, around what we do around docs. Um, and for those who aren't familiar, SIG Docs, we own the Kubernetes website and all of the written words that you see there, not only in English, but as you'll soon find out in all of the other languages that we have the docs available in too. And just a second, I'd also like to give a shout out to our technical leads who, who are not featured here, unfortunately, because we have quite a few of them. So uh, yeah, so there are like a bunch of technical leads and localization leads and uh, we have a whole team that manages this. So it's not just us three. We are the administrative heads, but there are a lot of other heads in the room too. So, yeah. Great. Um, so to get started today, we want to go through just quickly what you're about to learn. So first, what is localization? Um, that's something that, you know, uh, I, I like to look at this because uh, we talk about translation, but we are really, it's more than that. So we'll go into that in a second. Uh, we'll go into how you can start a localization. And then we'll also be looking at um, what localizations exist and how you can contribute to those that exist currently today. Um, English is a localization too. I mean, it's a de the default language for our docs, but at the same time, it's also somewhere where you can get started and take part as well. Um, and finally, we'll just summarize everything we've just said and give you a quick um, rundown of where you can find us so that if you've got any questions or um, want to get started, you'll know where to go. Okay. So what is localization? Um, firstly, I want to point out that all of the flags that I've put on the, the screen in front of you is actually all of the languages that we have our docs translated into. We're going to go into a bit of the list of those later on. Um, but localization is the act of translating and maintaining uh, the documentation that we have for Kubernetes into your native language. And the word native language is really important here because we really do rely on contributors who um, know how to possibly translate a term that may actually have many words that could be used, many phrases that could be used in a certain translation. And we want our docs, which are used by people all around the world to actually learn about and use Kubernetes. We need them to be as accurate, technically accurate, and then language-wise accurate as possible. So um, tra uh, localization really is about um, doing uh, translating and, doc uh, and maintaining docs in your native language. Uh, Kubernetes itself is a global project. It's a global project that we want users from all around the world to be contributing to, using, and helping to maintain. And so we find it really important to have docs in the languages that um, folks can access. Uh, and, 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 and fortunately, I was about to use the other word, but fortunately what that means is that we need a community of those native speakers to actually help us maintain and create those docs so that they can have a better time and users around them can have a better time in adopting and learning Kubernetes. Um, so localization is not just about translation, it's about community, it's about um, doing a lot of work, but then it's also about helping users adopt and welcoming them into your native community as well. So it really is a more than just making the words different. Um, and that's why we, we really focus on localization as a term as opposed to merely translation. So. We, this year specifically, have had a lot of interest in terms of um, wanting to start new localizations. We've got communities from Bulgaria, we have communities who speak Tamil, we have communities who speak Turkish, who are really, really interested in getting docs in their language. Um, and that's just three of the interesting uh, docs uh, groups that are currently in the process of helping to translate documentation right now that are really interested. Um, but uh, we often get this question about how to get started. Um, and I mentioned previously the word community. And that is really the first step in terms of getting started with um, a localization branch and, and, and launch. We need folks who are not only going to work together, but are actually going to approve each other's stuff. 
you, it's, before, I, before I principle, uh, we really use this in docs as well. You need at least two people who can help um, uh, getting community started um, so that you can work together and start those translations. Um, and finding community can, can be really, let's say, intimidating or hard. And so we, as, uh, as SIG Docs, have started the localization sub-project to really help with this, where you can come to the folks who lead the sub-project, you can speak to them about your questions. We have monthly meetings, which I'll have on the, um, on the screen later, so that you know where you can gather to actually help start it with, get started with community. We don't want you to do it alone, um, but uh, we want to support you as much as possible, but also give you as much autonomy so that you can actually get started with the work and feel like you're owning those parts of the docs that you're helping to translate and maintain. So the first step is finding community. It doesn't just take a day or two. This is the, the tough part. We can never put a timeline on this, is getting folks who want to be involved and then trying to get them involved consistently. It's uh, problem, challenge, I should say, that we constantly have, even with the English docs. Um, so it's something that we also want to support you with, too. So getting started with community is our first step. Next, what we want to do is we want you to get um, uh, involved in the localization meetings as well. We want you to actually, if we say you want to um, create community, then we want you to already join the one that exists. We think that that's a, that's a really logical next step. Um, and that community meets monthly, I've got it on the screen here. The first Monday of every month at uh, 1500 UTC, we try, and use a, we try and use a time zone that can be translated for everyone in um, every place in the world. Um, and we understand that you're not always going to be available for those meetings, so we are very big on async communication as well. Um, and we'll have later the, the, the channel listed for um, where you can join this. But joining our mailing list, of which we've got linked in the slides and we'll upload them to Shed afterwards, so you'll have those links available. Joining the mailing list, you'll get the um, invitation to those meetings so that you'll know they're on your calendar when to, when to join. Once you've got the invite, the uh, meeting agenda is open. You can add anything to the agenda to come and chat with us, whether it's questions about getting started, who you want to um, lean on to get help with certain process steps. Um, that is the place to get started too. So finding community one, joining our meetings too. What else do you need? to get started with a localization. Now, this is a really, really important step. We have a lot of interested people who want to get started with Kubernetes, um, and they think localization in terms of creating um, docs is the first step to do that. Um, but we, as I mentioned, we have an interesting challenge around consistency of contribution with not just docs, but throughout the project. And it's something that open source projects in general are constantly looking at helping to try, to try and drive. And so what we want to do is make sure that folks who are starting a localization, which is putting your hand up to maintain a set of documentation that is only readable by people who speak that native language and read it, um, are contributing to the project already and possibly in a consistent way, consistent in your uh, frame of uh, interpretation, of course. And so we want you to be Kubernetes org members already before you can start the localization. Um, the other reason too, actually, is because uh, to be able to approve PRs, you need that, you need that access. So it's a kind of like a, a bit of a forcing function, but in a good way, because we want you to own those localizations and we want you to own that work, but we also want you to show that you're contributing already so we can trust you with that ownership. And you've already kind of shown that by contributing to the project in some way already. And a great way is that you can contribute to some of the localizations first as that contribution step to show that you're ready to take on localization on your own. Um, so we've linked here um, how you can become a Kubernetes org member. Uh, TLDR is you're sponsored by two folks in the community. Um, us in SIGDOCs often sponsor people and we're happy to get you to come into the channel and link the PRs that you've done so that we can put that sponsorship uh, request in. Um, and, then, and then you're ready to go. So uh, that's the third step really that we wanted to highlight here about um, what you need to do to start. We want interest, community, we want your involvement, and then we want your contributions already. We really wanna we see you uh, contributing to the project in any way possible so that we can hand over that trust of owning a localization. All right, I'm almost done, I promise. Uh, the last little part here we've got in planning the localization law, it's a couple more process steps. So localizations, we use the um, ISO 6391 um, standard for our country codes. Um, language code, should I say? Um, and so you'll see in the channels that we'll list very soon uh, the way to find your code. We've linked here, but uh, as an example, English is EN, Chinese is ZH, uh, Ukrainian is UK, um, 
uh, Hindi. Hindi, H-I, thank you. <laughs> um, and so we use those codes as a way to um, uh, create the branches that we need to create, but also for the, the localization Slack channels too. And so once you've found community, where can you gather? We can get you to create a Slack channel with your right code and you can get your community gathered, gathered in that place so you can type and speak in your native language if you wish there. You can really kind of get yourself started and organized as well. Um, and we also want you um, to be um, uh, translating or um, um, the minimum required content before we get your localization published. That's the other last kind of process step that we have. Um, it's where uh, we really say, hey, if you want to show your community how to use Kubernetes, this is the minimum docs they'll re be required to read and know about. Um, and one of those, very importantly, is the code of conduct. So we've got that there too. That's another area of um, translation that we find really, really important. Do you want to add anything before I move on? No. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. All right. So we mentioned that Kubernetes is a really, really big, global, diverse project. Um, the SIG docs leadership even is diverse. <laughs> the three of us are in True. three different time zones. Um, I'm really surprised that we're awake together, actually. Yes. In, <laughs> that's because we are in Amsterdam. That's true. Very, very, very true. But we have someone on the west coast of the US. I'm in Europe. Um, Divya is in India. Yep. So we, uh, we, we rely a lot on async and we rely a lot on um, really living the values of the glo globality and diversity. Um, so that means we have a lot of localizations in existence right now as a representation of that. And I'd like to hand over to Divya to Ooh. tell you more. Thank you. So uh, you may ask how many number of localizations do we have currently? We have 14 of them, one of which actually went live after um, I think last year. We'll be delving a bit into Hindi, uh, the localization that went live last year after a lot of efforts because um, I believe Natalie actually um, mentioned before, right, that finding your community, finding your tribe to fi uh, build a localization is one of the most challenging aspects that you could go through while actually starting up a localization. So um, these are the current localizations that are live. We have a lot of interest in Turkish, Tamil, and uh, Bulgarian localizations, and we hope to get them out the door sooner rather than later, but uh, again, finding a community is really hard. So uh, that being said, um, how do you contribute to existing localizations? Because um, you cannot start your own localization uh, without being an existing Kubernetes org member. So why not actually become a Kubernetes org member by contributing to an existing localization? And English is one of them. So um, if you are already familiar with um, Kubernetes or if you're even just getting started, uh, we really appreciate your points of view uh, on how we could make the documentation better. Whether that's um, you know clarifying uh, how a particular concept is explained or whether that's you know making a minor typo edit, um, it's it's highly appreciated that you know you contribute to an existing localization first, get that Kubernetes org membership, and then you know if you want to uh, sign up to start your own localization. But before all this starts up, you obviously need to sign the contributor license agreement. So that's the very first step, and then you go ahead and you know find your community. Um, so there are um, you know Slack channels existing for. Um, you know, live localizations and localizations that are, you know, doing the work for uh, going live. And you can find them by their Slack channel uh, name that is Kubernetes-docs, dash the uh, code that we just saw a couple of slides back. Then uh, another, the next step is to join the SIGDOCs and the SIGDOCs localization mailing lists and attend the monthly localization meetings because those are really, really good avenues to actually clarify your doubts because it's um, it's a group of folks who are already working on the same stuff so it's easier for them to clarify and you know answer your queries and i spoke about hindi localization and how we went um, live last year so let's uh, let's have a little bit of a look at that so it's our very first localization in the devnagri script um, and it was launched last year on the august of 31st um, we had a lot of roadblocks getting this out of the door uh, initially because this was a localization that laid dormant before even I joined the project, uh, which was in 2020, three years before. So when I joined in, uh, this this was one of the first Slack channels I remember joining because it had the Hindi um, 
you know, ISO code. And uh, I was like, but there's nobody here. So, <laughs> so what happened was I ended up, um, you know, when the chance came and, you know, when the people actually came up to ask me whether I'd be, uh, you know, uh, willing to actually help lead, not lead, but help, uh, you know, form a community or help form the, you know, tribe around Hindi docs, I was like, great, it's absolutely awesome that we have something like that. So we started the efforts, I think, in uh, late 2021, that so this, the efforts culminated and they're still ongoing because docs are never done. Uh, they update every release cycle and unfortunately or fortunately for us, um, uh, tracking those changes is a lot of manual effort currently. So people leading the localization are, you know, required to actively track the docs that change per cycle and put out issues for them, ask contributors to come and chip in. And this is an ongoing effort. It doesn't really stop at the localization going live. So this is a bit about the Hindi localization. And um, just as an FII, every localization in our uh, documentation uh, you know, website has a different process. Like the process that we follow at the Hindi localization is not the same process that the Chinese or the, uh, you know, Korean. I don't remember that. Korean. Korean localizations follow. So um, we give that autonom uh, autonomy to actually, you know, follow whatever fits you best, for whatever fits your community best as, you know, a translation medium. Um, a huge shout out to the other members of the leadership team within the Kubernetes um, Hindi localization. Anubhav is a fellow approver. And um, if you were wondering if there was any way that, you know, we could, um, you know, demonstrate how the contribution ladder works in the localization, Vithal and Bishal recently joined the reviewers team on the Hindi localization after demonstrating consistent efforts. So they are really, really good examples of how, uh, you know, you embody the concept of actually um, doing the work before you're given the role. So those two are like the huge shout outs I'd like to give here because they've been very, very instrumental in getting a lot of the stuff updated and approved and out of the door um, after the localization went live. So that's a shout out from my side. And uh, we are now, you know, at the real end of our presentation and we'd like to actually look at some of the common FAQs that are thrown our way, mostly, um, you know, on the maintainers channel. So the very first one is, um, can you become a Kubernetes org member within, with just, you know, localization efforts? So, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes but uh, terms, of, there should be an asterisk, terms and conditions <laughs> apply. Um, uh, and, and the reason this is, is because um, we have a lot of interested folks in localization um, that want to work on their localization uh, native language. Um, but because you have to um, uh, translate the minimum required content before it's live on the site, technically those contributions don't count because the PRs aren't merged to main. Um, and so we really do need you contributing elsewhere maybe in other localizations first, for that Kubernetes organization membership to be able to be valid before um, the rest of the, the work can, can kind of begin. So, so that's something that, it, yes, localization work does count, but for live languages only. Yeah, a good way, like I said before, is to start just contributing to the English website itself because it's huge. You're bound to find some typo, some error. And as much as I'd like to say that we're perfect, we're not. So there will be an error. There will be a typo. There will be a grammatical error somewhere that you can find. And you can contribute. You can just get started by contributing to that. And then maybe once you have, you know, a sustained contribution effort, we can, you know, you can reach out to one of us on, uh, you know, the SIGDOC Slack channel, which we shall be you know, demonstrating on the slides. Um, and let us know about your contributions so that we can approve your membership. You'd definitely, you'd be surprised at how many people spell Kubernetes wrong. Yes. Like that's, you can absolutely just look through the docs of the English site and find those as, a, as your first contributions, absolutely. <laughs> the next one is, uh, where can I ask or who can I ask for help, really? Because 
the project is really huge. So the first step I would say is to post uh, on SIGDOC's localizations. Um, that's the Slack channel that's open for uh, the localizations of project on the K8 Slack. Um, your points of contact, and I would highly recommend not DMing them uh, because that's something that you know I genuinely face an issue with. I would highly recommend not asking your questions in private. Uh, you should generally post in public so that you are able to you know solve the doubts that you have, but that might just not be your doubt alone. It might be doubts that other people have to. So first would be you know pinging the Sing Dogs localization Slack channel. And then, you know, if there is no response for a really long amount of time, then go ahead and pick them separately. But uh, those are the people. And if you can also cross post to uh, SIG Docs, which is the Slack channel for the main docs website. Uh, but that's, I guess, in the next slide. So of where to find us. So you can find us on the mailing list. Um, and this is hyperlinked and will be available on shared. So that is the reason why I'm not written the link here. So you can find us on our mailing list. We also meet bi-weekly uh, on Tuesday. Um, it's currently at 11.30 p.m. my time. So I'm not awake, but Natalie and Ray are. So they will be um, available. We also host an APAC specific call as well. But most of you all will not be awake and probably are not going to attend that call. So. Uh, but, that, uh, but that is monthly as Yes, well. but that is monthly and on the fourth Wednesday of every month. And of course, these are the Slack channels, SIGDOC's localization for the localization sub project and the main Slack channel or for our SIG, this, that is SIGDOC's. And I guess that is pretty much it. So please scan the QR code. And if you have any questions, we'll be happy to answer them right now. Let us know if you have questions. Oh, front. <laughs> So you, you had mentioned that you need to be a contributor, um, an, an existing org member, or working towards org membership. Do those contributions need to be in SIG docs? Great question. No. Um, you can contribute to anywhere in the project. Um, SIG docs does not require you to be a documentation expert to contribute to docs. Um, the requirement in terms of localization is we want you to be a native speaker of the localization that you're owning. Um, so that is kind of a hard uh, requirement. And, and that's the requirement is, is you tell us and we believe you. <laughs> so, uh, so we're not really checking your localization credentials there. Um, but you can be contributing to any part of the project. We have a lot of SIGs that need your help. Um, I'm going to say a couple right now. SIG nodes, SIG CLI, SIG K8 infra. Um, they all need your help. Um, uh, SIG auth as well, for sure. And so, um, and there's a lot of different ways to help too. Um, it doesn't have to be docs based in those SIGs. It can be, especially if you're a Go developer, please come, come, on, come on down and help us. Um, and you can contribute in any, any SIG in any way first. And most projects I know definitely need help with project management. Uh, uh, we are also looking for help, so <laughs> yeah, that is a separate also discussion also. altogether, but yes. <laughs> More questions? More questions. Going once? Okay. <laughs> I think we're good. Thanks, everyone, for Thank coming. Um, what D uh, Divya did say, uh, don't DM us, but I mean, for Kubernetes purposes, if we're still, I mean, for the K KubeCon purposes, if we're still around, you want to chat to us, that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> because uh, my Slack DMs are currently, um, you know, they're really bad, in a really bad state after KubeCon. So if you want to chat, I'm like right around here. So please, please be free. My DMs may not be in a very good position after KubeCon. So that's why. Thank you.